Hey everybody, it is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Today's reading is called Firecracker, who is excited about you? And we have three piles to choose from today. Pile number one is represented by the persuasive temptation energy. And um, on the picture of this card is a pile of syrupy pancakes. Okay, so if you're feeling the temptation and you're into syrupy pancakes, you can choose pile number one. For pile number two, we have sneaking and secretly plotting, and we've got the red umbrella here. So if you're into secretly planning and plotting things, you'll choose pile number two with the red umbrella. And then pile number three is the red light special, and it says pamper and take care of you. Okay, so this is the pampering pile for pile number three. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath, anchor into the energy, think about what pile is calling to you. And you can go directly to your pile. There'll be timestamps in the description box below. If you're interested in a personal reading with me, details are in the description box below for how to book one. And if you'd like a natal chart reading, details are below and my books are open. So thank you so much and let's go ahead and begin. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the persuasive pancakes and your pile is called temptation. So let's go ahead, pile number one, and give in to the temptation and see who is excited about pile number one? So let's go ahead and give in to the temptation. Who is excited about pile number one? Persuasive temptation. Let's see. Who is excited for about pile number one, please? Who is excited for pile number one? Okay, pile number one. And on the bottom of the deck is the page of coins or the page of pentacles. We could have an earth sign, somebody who is a little bit shorter with um, brown, light brown hair is something that I am seeing here, okay? But let's go ahead and find out this could be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, someone that's younger than you, someone that has reddish brown hair or light brown hair. And um, yeah, let's see what else we have. Someone that may wear like blacks or mauve color a lot. Okay. And um, let's see. Let's see what else. I'm also getting a Leo energy here pile number one. So let's see what we have. We have the queen of spears, which in this deck is the queen of wands. We have the knight of swords. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I feel like there's more than one person. Pile number one. We've got the chariot here. Okay. Ferocious energy. Somebody that doesn't like to be kept waiting. Somebody that is uh, very like precise and strict and prompt with what they say and do. Um, they may be kind of impatient. They may hate waiting. I'm also seeing somebody that has uh, like a nice car or a nice ride. Okay. And, um, and is very persuasive with the way that they speak. Very, very persuasive with getting people to do what they want them to do. Okay. And we have the star card here as well, okay? So somebody who hopes if they are persistent and say the right things, that it is gonna pay off with you, okay? And um, anyway, pile number one. Let's see what else we have here. We have Virgo, all right? So somebody could have Virgo in this reading. We have Neptune, interesting. All right, now this is, here is what I think. Pile number one. I think that you guys are very perceptive, pile number one, and I think you don't miss a lot yourself. And I think you are very aware of what's going on around you. And I feel like, you know, you are 
aware of when someone is like, you know, talking a big game or isn't making sense or doesn't um, like, you know, I feel like you guys are very keen, pile number one. And this person is enchanted by you. They're enchanted by who you are, by what you say, by what you do, okay? And they do kind of feel under the microscope because I feel that, um, and maybe the reason that you guys are so like exacting is because getting to know new people kind of makes you nervous or letting new people into your life makes you kind of nervous, okay? And that's why you are like really try to observe and keenly pay attention to what people are saying. And if it doesn't make sense, then like you're like, I, yeah, I don't like that. I don't want that. Okay. And um, this person coming through with Neptune talking about fantasizing about you, dreaming about you, um, like, you know, they've got a really big imagination and they have like so many things that they want to say to you. And sometimes they may even have a little bit darker of an imagination. And, um, you know, and the thing is, is I feel you guys pick up on subtle nuances very easily and you pick up on, and you've got a lot of confidence in yourself, but you're also like a very pure soul. So you can kind of tune in when people, you have a razor sharp mind, I feel pile number one, and you can really tune in when people are not um, being totally clear with their intentions and what they're saying, okay? And um, you're very discerning. You have really good powers of discernment and this person's having a little bit of a hard time kind of doing their usual, um, doing their usual way that they usually do things because they know you have these standards and um, they're like very enchanted by you. And they're very like hopeful and inspired. I feel like they're even inspired by you to do something wild with the chariot here to kind of get your attention. And, um, you know, and the queen of wands, like, yeah, you do need to work hard to impress her and you do need her attention. And, um, yeah, so we've got friendship here. This person, the 11th house of friendship, this person really wanting to, um, you know, like there could be a friendship between you and this person and they're wanting to see if it can go beyond that or if there is momentum here with the chariot to go beyond, if there's truly can persuade you through the beautiful things. You know, Neptune has a lot to do with poetry and vision and dreams and, um, you know, like beautiful words and inspired. Um, Neptune also has to do with somebody who like smells really good or wears really amazing perfume or lotions and then someone who kind of becomes entranced with that person or enchanted with that person someone whose mem whose imagination is like running wild like you know with the chariot like imagination kind of running wild and so many things to say and usually I feel like this person is very good with the things that they say very very good but for some reason, when they're around you, it's kind of like they just go into like, they go into like basically their imagination, they go into visions, they go into fantasies of what things could be, okay? And they really want to discover some things that you two may have in common or discover some shared like hobbies or interests or common goals and things that you share in common. Basically, they want a reason to talk to you. And, um, you know, this person could be an acquaintance 
that wants to like further the dialogue with you with the Knight of Swords here that feels like they have a lot of momentum but also kind of feels like if they push it too far you might withdraw. I'm also getting Leo and Aquarius energy here, pile number one. We could also have Virgo, as I mentioned. Now here's Sagittarius, okay? And philosophical, independent, okay? And the star card is very much that way. The star card is very, um, like, independent. And although in this particular star card, she's kind of waiting for somebody to come and save her, um, and is waiting like for something to come and liven herself again. So that's kind of interesting pile number one. And, um, sometimes in those moments, those dark moments, when we've really lost hope, we look for that light in the room or we look for that sign that someone cares, or we look for that, like, what direction should I go in? Which is very Sagittarius, you know, what, what direction should I go in here and how should I go about this, right? Looking for a sign, looking for direction about something, okay? And somebody wanting to expand further on... The thing is, is I feel like this person doesn't know what you're thinking because there's all this empty space like above her head. I feel like this person doesn't really know what you're thinking because it's kind of like a game of chicken where one person is like really really excited and really like wants to get to know you better but they're a little confused Neptune energy um because you seem like very um reserved is what I'm getting pile number one okay and maybe you're just very observant or you like to think before you speak or you are actually waiting for some for something or someone else, okay? And some of you could be waiting for another person to come back, but at the same time, there's this other person who's still interested in you, okay? And right now, they, they have a lot of, they can't quite figure you out, but they've got a lot of momentum to try to, they've got hope and a lot of momentum, is what I feel, star card and chariot, to kind of try to figure you out and figure what's going on with you and approach you in a way that makes sense to you, okay? And someone here could be a Virgo or a Sagittarius. Um, and, you know, this could be someone who's got a lot of dreams and thoughts and visions for the future, for their success and what they're trying to do. Okay, this could be somebody who is interested in going to festivals or community events or getting to know more people through shared common passions that they have. Okay, and this person's trying to figure you out. I feel like big time. Okay, big time pile number one. But I also feel like you guys are a little distracted because I kind of feel within your heart of hearts, you're kind of hoping that someone else comes back or someone else like again I started this reading thinking there were two people in this reading this person who is excited to try to figure you out because you're this mystery and then another person you've been holding on hope to that they will come back and I keep getting that song um this time won't you save me this time won't you save me I don't know if you guys know that um song but I feel like it's been somebody who's like been away or been gone or been off traveling or isn't like you know lives at a distance from you or doesn't live in the same area that you live in and the thing is is that it has been very like you've had to like basically hold a candle in the darkness and really try to um decode the writing on the wall because it's like okay I'm not really sure when this person's coming back and I'm not really sure like what's gonna happen and I'm not sure what to think about any of this okay and um you know and the page of pentacles ask us like am I being given something back that's a burden or am I give, being given something that I really don't want 
or am I being given back something that's a burden? So I think that's an interesting thing to think about it. And this person is saying, I hate when your attention is focused on other people. I get extremely jealous. Yeah. Okay. And I can see you guys talking on the phone to someone else or um, putting your attention on someone else. Or just when you stop and pause and listen to this person and you pay really close attention to what they're doing and saying, it kind of like stops them in their tracks and causes them to like freeze because they're like, whoa, freeze frame. Okay. And they want your attention, Queen of Wands. They want the Queen of Wands attention. But I feel like you guys are very discerning and picky with Virgo here about who you give your attention to. And some of you may have Leo Virgo in your chart, okay? But you're picky about who you give your attention to. You're not just going to like believe anything anyone is telling you. So um, this person's like, how do I say it? How do I phrase it? Like, how do I let you know that like, I'm trying to kind of figure you out is what I feel like this person is saying. They're saying, I'm amazed at how perfect you are for me. Sometimes it feels as if it's not real. Well, that's Neptune, okay? Something feeling like a fantasy or feeling like it's not real. Also, sometimes with Neptune, we can put people on a pedestal thinking that they're perfect, especially with that Virgo energy of... Um, perfecting something or wanting something to be perfect, okay? And this person's like, well, you look like the perfect fantasy to me. Like, I want you, okay? And they don't like it when they, it, like, thinking about you having your attention on someone else gets them really riled up and really, like, you know, like, oof, I got to do something now, you know? Like, the idea that you might be waiting for someone else or thinking about someone else or it looks like you always have a lot on your mind. This person can't really figure you out because you've got like a lot on your mind, okay? But I feel like you guys are kind of saying, Natalie, this person doesn't really know me that well. And I feel like they kind of have put me on a pedestal or they have put me on some type of like fantasy thing. But actually like, the candle in the night is for a different situation here. And I feel like you guys are kind of like, hmm, skeptical a little bit of this Knight of Swords and their enthusiasm and things like that for you. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like you, you're, you listen. It's not like you don't want the attention at all. It's just, I feel like your mind is elsewhere with this star card. I feel like your mind is elsewhere on someone else or something else. And this Knight of Swords trying to find a way to like persuade you or tempt you into something. And the Knight of Swords in the tarot is Aquarius. So there could be someone with that here. And um, it says, I've loved you forever in many lifetimes before. I promise you never will you hurt anymore. Okay. So this person really feeling like excited and on edge and, you know, really wanting to like really hopeful. The 11th house in astrology, which came up here is about, it's yes, it's about friendship, um, but it's also about like our hopes and our wishes and our wish fulfillment in life. Like, um, you know, this person's like, I have the energy to like, if you give me one sign that you would be my friend or that you would consider me, like, I've got a lot of energy to pursue the chariots, quite a lot of energy, okay? But it's also about maintaining control um, between two opposing forces, right? So this person says, I loved you, I loved you forever and many lifetimes before. I promise you never, I promise you never will you hurt anymore, okay? And, um, and for some of you, I feel like you like to know what's going on and your mind is very curious and you may overthink sometimes. So when you're just kind of left in the dark about things and you're not really told like what's going on or how things are going to work out or what's going to happen, it's kind of like feeling kind of left and lost in the dark a little bit. And, um, so I kind of feel some of you have been in that space. Again, here comes the chariot. 
We've got the chariot twice in this reading now. And, um, you know, and here's the thing. This is the chariot is oftentimes about travel or a road trip or going somewhere different. Um, and somebody who doesn't like to stick around a lot. It's like, you know, once I'm done doing this job here, I'm out of here. Like someone who plans to leave, but also plans to return, okay? And I kind of feel like you guys are saying, I'm actually planning to leave too, Natalie. Like, I'm actually, like, I'm leaving as well, okay? Or I want to leave as well too, all right? And um, I feel some of you have been a little in the dark about some plans. Maybe they've been travel plans, um, who's going with whom, a trip with a friend, friends you've been in the dark about, who's going where, when are we leaving, when are we going. Uh, Virgo wants to know the details. And with Neptune, details about things can be kind of hazy. It's like, well, we don't know all the details. And I feel like this person is saying, yeah, this Knight of Swords, hey, yeah, I do like you. Yeah, I don't know you that well, but I do like you. And um, maybe we don't know everything about each other and maybe it is like a fantasy or whatever, but it's kind of interesting because this person is really wanting to gather all their momentum to come towards you. But I also feel like you guys are planning on leaving pile number one. Like you may not even be, you might be, you know, leaving for work or you might be going on a trip or you might just be leaving in general. You know, like I'm moving away from this place, okay? And I feel like you guys have a hope and a wish um, that once some money things come through with this page of pentacles, like once some money things start coming through, you're gonna be more mobile yourself and you're gonna be able to kind of go some different places. And um, I feel like this Knight of Swords is like, well, I'll come with you then, <laughs> you know? Like, hell yeah, let's go. But I kind of feel like you guys want to go with someone else or something else is what I'm seeing. We've got Cardinal and Adventure. You need to live up to your full, fullest potential, explore new direction, and take risks in order to grow as an individual. And this is something you guys know for sure. Change may be uncomfortable, but it is necessary. And, you know, because you like to know everything ahead of time in the plan, I feel like it's hard sometimes just to go without knowing what's ahead, right? But I kind of feel some of you know that you need to explore new directions in order to grow as an individual, okay? And this person, you're coming through as the Queen of Wands, so this person sees you as a person that wants to have adventures, that wants to travel, that wants to explore in new directions. But I feel like they're kind of like, but is it with me? Because I hope it's with me. And, um, you know, the thing is, is I feel you guys are kind of hoping it's something else or someone else. So that is interesting. Uh, we have teamwork. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you don't really know someone until you travel with them, right? Like teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. We have card 48 here and teamwork. Okay. And in order to pull something off or in order to pull something really big off and make something really cool happen, yeah, sometimes we need like everyone on this, we need everyone on the same page. We need teamwork, okay? And I feel like this person is saying, I'll help you. I'll, you know, I feel like this person is saying, I've always put you first. This is card number one, okay? And, um... And I almost feel like Spirit is telling you guys that to go travel with a friend of yours, okay? Because I see the finger here pointing towards this 11th house of friendship. And maybe some of you do have a dream to go travel with a friend. And like, not, not a lover, but I mean a friend or a best friend or something like that. And maybe it is time. Maybe adventure is calling. Maybe it is time to get out of your head and get out of your environment and you know, once the money comes through, it's like, yeah, like, let's get the F out of here, you know? Um, but there could be like, I feel spirit is definitely saying it's okay to leave and go and spend some time 
doing the things you've always dreamed of and go spend some time traveling and seeing friends and this type of stuff because it might be just what the doctor ordered for you guys. Pile number one, we have North Node and Life's Purpose, okay? So there is something here about the funding with the page of coins about the funding to like, you know, getting money back or getting paid back or receiving the funds that you need to receive in order to go on a really fun adventure, okay? And to really go after what you want, there needs to be teamwork. There, both people need to be on the same page, okay? And I feel like something that really appeals to you guys is two partners tra traveling together, working together, being on the same page together, teamwork, um, and maybe some of you feel here that part of your life purpose in life or part of your dharma in this lifetime is to, you know, and maybe I feel some of you felt very like alone with things and a lot of the responsibility on your shoulders and you felt alone with things. And it would be nice to have a teammate in life to travel with and to take adventures with, whether that's, you know, your best friend whether you know you've been waiting for your best friend to come home from a trip and then you're going to go together or or whether that is a partner or someone that you care about okay and some of you could be in the travel industry in general and um and you know i'm thinking about like travel agents and um, people that work for companies that have to do with the travel and inner Entertainment business is something that I'm kind of feeling here. Travel, travel and leisure business. All right. But there is this connection of, wow, we have the same like thing that we want to do. And this Knight of Swords is like, we want to build the same dream. Like we have the same ideas for our future and where we want to head. And both of us want to live life. And maybe it's like, let's take a year off and backpack or let's move to a different country, or, you know, but teamwork makes the dream work. That's for sure with Neptune here too. Teamwork makes the dream work. And I feel like this person is like, geez, you know, we would like be so perfect to each other, uh, for each other, and we would, you know, have the most fun and really enjoy like seeing so many different places and going on an adventure together and I feel like this person is like really gung-ho with the North Node here. Like, that's what I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. All right. And we've got card 48 and 41. So there could be like a seven-year age difference here, a seven-year age gap, or something that's been going on now for the last seven years of you guys wanting to have more adventure and travel and go places and you know, friends are involved in this, building a dream, a travel company, a dream with friends of traveling and and that type of thing. And it's like, I've always wished for that type of life and I've always wanted that flexibility in my life, okay? And this person's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's do it. But they're also like confused because they can't really figure you out, okay? But I feel some of you may have... Um, some hopes that you are hanging on for the future with someone else or something else, all right? And you were waiting for the money or the finances to come through to make some of these things happen and finalize your plans or your details, pile number one, okay? But that's what I'm getting. I'm getting it's this Knight of Swords who is really um, wanting to connect with you and is excited about you, okay? And for those of you that have someone else that you've been in the dark about and you've been kind of waiting for and you're not sure of, but you know, I would spirit, I feel like is telling you guys is saying, don't hold back your plans. Um, if you have made plans, go and, and enjoy yourself and spend some time with friends and making new friends. Okay. Um, don't like, just stay alone in the dark with things like get out there in the world. Okay. Is what I feel like spirit is saying. So pile number one, 
that is what I am getting for you, my loves. I hope that that reading resonated for you, and I'd love to hear any thoughts or comments that you have on the reading. Let's go ahead and move on to pile number two. Okay. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the plotting and sneaky secret planning card and you chose the red umbrella, pile number two. So we are gonna go ahead and get into your reading. This reading is called Firecracker. Who is excited about you? Who is most excited about you? Let's go ahead and find out for my pile number twos, who is most excited about Pile number two, firecracker. Okay, spirit, show me the qualities of this person who is most excited about pile number two, please. Show me the qualities of this person who's most excited. All right. It's so weird how like everything can kind of come together at the last minute, you know? Pile number two, I was just getting thoughts about that while I was shuffling and here's the sun. Ooh, and sun of course is huge excitement, glowing. It's like, you're so happy, you're youthful, you're playing, you're partying, you're excited, you're jumping up and down for joy, right? Joy, 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 joy. Pile number two, okay. So that is a lot of excitement and that is like a lot of fun and pleasure and play. And yeah, this reading, and of course, the sun is a huge fireball. So, you know, it fits already in your reading, pile number two. We've got the six of wands. Watch me do this layup, okay? We have the lovers, the lovers, and that's a really sexy lovers um, because in this deck, there is uh, two women on the card and one looks like she's reaching her hand through the other person. Okay, interesting. And we've got the Knight of Cups. Ooh, okay now. Interesting. And we've got the Five of Cups. Okay. Ooh, pile number two, okay. I'm getting something, okay, I just have to give you guys a quick side note. I'm getting um, something about someone's family where usually around this time of year, the family gets together or this was the time of year when um, you and your family would like always go on a trip or you would always uh, go somewhere. And I feel like it is kind of the first year without that person or it's like the first anniversary um, of somebody like, or it could be the second or third anniversary, you know, but it's, it's fresh grief. I feel like with the five of cups where, you know, normally this time of year, you would be, um, like, you know, going on a trip with your family or like spending time, like with your cousins or, um, you know, going to like, see your mom and dad or, going to like see your little brother or whatever it is like you would be like this time of year you would normally be they would be come to visit you or you would be going to visit them or you'd be planning a trip and I feel like someone is gone or somebody is no longer around anymore okay and it could be someone's father all right like we just had father's day in the United States so you know, it could be a reminder of somebody being gone or somebody not being around during that time. So I just, I have to bring this up because I do feel like there is a family member coming through um, in this reading for you, pile number two, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. We're still gonna, you know, we're still gonna kick it smooth like this Venus love action we've got going on here in this reading but I just had to bring that up because I do see 
Um, and something about the summertime or spending time together as a family could really be bringing up feelings of grief for someone watching this reading. And I just want you to know that um, spirit loves you and, and spirit sees what you go through. Sometimes like when we just go and we sit out in nature and it's like so quiet that we feel like we can hear the trees breathing and we can see the light coming through the leaves and um, it's just like a really silent moment and we feel like that other person is near us or around us, okay? And um, we have empowerment, okay? Conjunction and an empowering connection with someone where you feel like you reached into the soul of that other person, okay? And the power, the power and the kiss, I'm also seeing these two sharing a really intimate kiss, okay? There is a huge power in that moment, okay? And sometimes like, you know, we have kisses with different people in life and it's not always, um, you know, the most powerful, but I feel like there is this bond that you share with someone and it is a powerful moment when you two connect or kiss or hug, okay? Like it feels like you're kind of like reaching into each other's souls, okay? And um, you know, the Six of Wands is about like this person is like, I am so excited like about the connection between you and I. Like it is such a freaking slam dunk and it's such an exciting feeling of like winning your love six of wands and the lovers like it's such an exciting feeling of winning your love and I feel so empowered to show you and tell you how I'm feeling because I am like buzzing with excitement okay and Venus the goddess of love and beauty showing up in your reading and I feel like this person is saying like, you deserve somebody who is a, a winner, somebody who is willing to, uh, you know, show up for you and, and play, play the game for you. Like somebody who's willing to compete and show up for you, but also someone who's willing to impress you and do nice things for you. But when you kiss, it's like, oh my gosh, like everybody gets swept up in the moment and swept up in the energy and it is powerful, okay? And um, this concentrated mag magnetic energy that comes through, okay? And this person really finding a lot of like compatibility with you as well, I feel like with the lovers here. And let's see what else we have. We have Uranus and Revolution, Insight, Awakening, the Unexpected, okay? Something happened unexpectedly to this person, okay? And it changed everything, all right? And I feel like someone's not the same anymore. And maybe it's you that aren't the same anymore. Pile number two, after going through a major devastating loss in your life and it really um, deepened all your connections in your life because you went through this kind of um, deep change and deep loss. We have Chiron and healing. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is about, you know, pain, softness, cleansing, releasing pain, personal development, Okay, and it is about, you know, the tears that you have cried, all right? But it is also, I feel like this person is saying, I really want to prove to you that I can rise to the level of what you want. Like, that I can, um, you know, that we have the same taste and style. And I really want to take you out to eat and indulge you in all the good things, okay? Maybe even a little bit of jealousy that this person has. Pile number two, when you're spending time with other people um, or complimenting other people or spending time with other, other people, this person may have a little bit of jealousy, 
okay? Because they do have a need to win and come out on top when it comes to you. And they, like I said, they want to impress you with their taste and their style and all of that. The thing is, the thing that I kind of feel though, pile number two, is that you are a little more elegant than this person, or maybe you have um, a little more sophistication than this person, or a little more elegance to you, all right? And your type is also somebody who is a little less, um, I don't know, I'm kind of getting, pile number two, I'm kind of getting like differences in income or differences in style or dress or things like that that can come up. But I also kind of feel like your guys' tastes have changed, like they have evolved and your tastes of, you know, clothing and like what you go for and um, style and, you know, having someone that because you can kind of tell sometimes when a couple like looks good together like they they're kind of dressed in a similar style like they gel that's a very venusian thing to have that okay and i kind of feel like this person could be more athletic or sporty um or they like dress down more or dress more athletic or sporty and maybe you dress a little bit more um classy i'm also getting people in the reading who are like bisexual and like men and women with this lover's card here um but i'm just getting like some differences between you and this person but i also kind of feel like your guys's um style of type of person has changed and you care more about ever since losing someone important in your life i feel like it's caused a lot of changes in you and I feel like you care more about what's in the person's soul. King of, um, we have the Knight of Cups, like Knight of Cups. You care more about what's in the person's soul than, and even if they are like a little bit, they look a little bit quirky or different or they're a little nerdy or weird, okay? I kind of feel like you guys are okay with it. You might actually even like it to a certain extent because you've done a lot of individual healing and you are more attracted to um like you've done a lot of personal development and i feel like you're more attracted to what's underneath the person and what's in their heart versus like all like what clothes they wear and this type of stuff okay is also what i am seeing and some of you here could have a little brother that's like very nerdy or into computers or into science or into computer science, okay? Um, and somebody who, or like this person could have been really nerdy when they were young and they were like dorky and nerdy and into computers or gaming or stuff like that. But now that they have become older, they like look good or they look different and this person i also feel like was really there for you during a time where you were really grieving something pile number two okay like you were really um grieving and going through a, an immensely challenging period where you were looking at generational trauma self-doubt um, you know, personal healing, making amends with the past, like you were looking at all these things. And I feel like as you were looking at all these things, your idea of this person changed and you're like, actually, they're like really romantic. Actually, um, they're like really successful and funny, or actually they're a lot more like relaxed and chill and and calm than and fun and nerdy that I like really gave them gave them credit for okay and so I kind of feel like there is some of that going on here and um, I'm also getting someone where like a person that someone is dating has similar qualities to a person that tragically passed okay or you know how sometimes like we date someone and they um, like remind us of somebody 
even if it was someone from our family. And that's not to be weird, right? It's not like they look like them or anything. It's more like some of their personal qualities and characteristics are like that person. Now, I am getting somebody that has really changed, that went from like a dorky, nerdy, um, you know, person into like kind of more of a Rico Suave type of a person, okay, that really, really, really changed and like really, really was unexpected um, when this person came into your life, when you were going through like a massive like issue, you were going through a massive healing of your own like life, okay? And um, we have here, you are incredibly sexy. I can't stop imagining all the things that I wanna do to you, okay. <laughs> interesting we have throat chakra and communication all right and you know this person really wanting to join energy with you with the lovers and really speak to you and know what's on your mind the lovers in the tarot is gemini okay the knight of cups is scorpionic energy in the tarot and um you know the five of cups is also mars and scorpio so we've got some scorpio gemini energy here but um, we can see like how inauthenticity in relationships and maybe there was some inauthenticity in relationships in the past, like only going for people because how they dress or how they look or certain status or whatever. And it's just, um, these days I feel like you and this person, you're more concerned about like truly connecting with someone on a more emotional level. And it says here, it's time to get honest, real, and vulnerable, okay? How are you showing up in the world? Throat chakra, okay? And sometimes we need to, we need to like talk about things and we need to have like a mutual understanding between both parties, which is very much a lover's type of an energy. And sometimes people avoid having important conversations and they make out and kiss and get physical with one another when they should be talking about certain things, right? They, I mean, there's a time and place for all of it, right? For the making out and the kissing and all of that, but sometimes people rely more on their physical connection and attraction instead of like what is more um, like powerful and authentic within people, okay? And I feel like this person is authentic and I, I feel like they've changed a lot and I feel like there is this sense of wanting to help each other identify that authenticity within one another okay but it's not always easy because sometimes we're afraid you know and this person is saying it's not that I cannot live without you I just don't want to even try every single night I dream about you since we've said goodbye oh and you know what pile number two I also feel for those of you that have lost someone this could have been like how you were feeling it's not that I can't live without you. I just don't want to try. Every single night I dream about you since we've said goodbye. Oh, and that's so painful. Lots of, lots of, you know, some of you went through a very terrible loss. Very, very painful loss that really changed you on a fundamental level. And um, there has to be something deeper there, right? Than just like the physical or the attraction or whatever. There has to be something deeper there because I feel like, wow, you guys have changed so much. Yeah, <laughs> we have allergic to bullshit. The four of swords, taking a break, you're blocked, okay? And um, yeah, I feel like you guys are just saying, I'm at a point in my life where like, I want to be excited and I want to be happy, but I'd rather be healthy, wealthy, and wise than like dealing with bullshit. Okay. And it's like, don't just tell me what I want to hear because you like me and you're attracted to me and you want to get with me and you like my style and you'd think I look, I look good with you or whatever. Like, don't, I don't want that. I, I truly want somebody 
Like my heart has changed and I am allergic to bullshit. And unless it's something completely unique and different, you know, Uranus energy, I don't want, I don't want to go through that pain anymore. Okay. And spirit really wanting to help you guys find a sense of play and joy and excitement in your life. I feel like with the sun here and help burn off some of those um, painful memories that you guys have really been. And maybe for some of you, it's like you've been clinging to the memories, even if they are painful. Okay. And, um, you know, somebody could have came back and said, Hey, it's not that I can't live without you. I dream about you every night. And you guys are like, well, if you're dreaming about me every night and you want to be with me, then you should have said something then because now I don't care anymore. I'm allergic to bullshit now. Now I don't care anymore. And you can say whatever you want, but I'm not going to believe you unless you're there for me and you show up for me. Okay, so I do see that. And we have here beaver and balance. You're being told that hard work is important, but so is quality times with loved ones. Yeah, and that's really the Knight of Cups, quality time with loved ones. Um, and I feel like there is some regret here. I'm getting like the French word. I don't even know, like I don't know why I just got the French word, like je regrette or regret or anyway, je regret. I don't know how I don't know how to say that in French, but I feel like I'm seeing the word regret in another language. It even sounded a little bit Spanish when I said it there, but but anyway, I'm just getting that there are regrets and I feel like, you know, your guys is you guys have been taught a lot through a loss that you went through. And it could be like I said the loss of a family member, um the loss of an important relationship, but you've been through a lot of loss, okay? And the thing is, is that, you know, connecting is so important, right? Being on the same page, the lovers and connecting is so important. And it goes so much more beyond like superficial, the way people look or whatever. But, you know, sometimes people, and I honestly feel there is someone here that has passed on pile number two that wishes they would have spent more time with you. And maybe you wish you would have spent more time with that person too. Somebody was working too much um, and didn't really have their priorities straight. And someone was just like really working hard, but they forgot to like spend time. I mean, they, they wanted to spend more time with you is what I feel here. Okay. Because the beaver is very busy and the and the card here is balance, right? So we can be busy and working hard, but we need to have our priorities straight, right? And sometimes it's too late. Sometimes we don't get to show people that we cared because our priorities were not really there at the time, okay? There must be balance between work, play, family, and career uh, for overall wholeness and success, right? And, um, that's a big lesson that I feel like you guys have taken to heart big time is, hey, don't let a day go by without telling the people that you love that you care about them, okay? And don't don't let a day go by without letting someone know that you believe in them or you care or you want to show up, you know, all this, you want to show up for the people that you care about, right? So I do feel like in order to maintain connection, there does need to be that balance and that wholeness between things, okay? And we have preparation here, wow. And um, you know, sometimes we think something is easy, gonna be easy and fall into our lap really easy, but we don't recognize how much time and work and effort someone took to prepare for something Okay, and um, yeah, even preparing to come in and have a lifetime on earth, like I fully believe that our souls spend a lot of time preparing before we come to the earth plane because I mean, it is such a big deal to incarnate and there is so much work to do and to be done and so much preparation put into things. Um, but sometimes when someone like prepares something or comes a really long way, 
or does a whole lot of stuff and then the other person doesn't have the time to see them or doesn't, you know, like show up or whatever. I mean, that can be very painful. And maybe there does need to be a conversation about um, the effort and the work that is needed to be put into things, okay? And I feel you guys are like, you know, if some, because you guys are allergic to bullshit, okay, pile number two. So you're like, it's bullshit. If somebody isn't making the time for you, then it, I don't want to try. I don't care. If you're not going to talk to me and you're not going to make the time for me, okay, I don't want to, I don't want it. I've been through that. I've done that. It hurts. I don't want to go there, okay? So I feel you guys are really allergic to bullshit and I do feel quality time is an important love language for you guys because the effort and the time that it takes to um you know do something and prepare for something and all of that like it is a lot of, you know it is a lot of things okay and I feel like this person has changed a lot pile number two and I feel like their idea of relationships and connection has really evolved and I feel like their feelings have really changed because maybe in the past it was more of a superficial thing or they weren't really getting something about you and what you need but I really do feel like this person recognizes the change that is needed in the situation and I do feel like they've had a lightning bolt a moment of awakening and it's like you know it doesn't really feel complete unless you are there, is what I feel like this person is saying, okay? And um, we have the moon here and soul. Yeah, soul ties. And again, the moon does have to do with um, family. And I don't know why I keep coming back to that in this reading, because it's not really <laughs> a reading about that. But of course, it could be soul family. It doesn't have to be like actual family. But um, there is something with the moon about like, you know, personal care, nourishing, um, making meals, having meals together, spending time together, um, you know, intimately talking about the time and the effort that people are putting into things and not just superficially but on a much deeper level okay and I just feel you guys have been you you're really starting to understand the care the personal effort the time the energy that it takes to put into something and um a lot of you, I feel like maybe you've been like, you know what, if I'm alone, I don't even care if I am alone because I am allergic to bullshit and I have been healing from the past and it is too late for this person to tell me that they can't live without me and I am focusing on relationships where we can actually talk and communicate and it's not just about superficial things, you know, so I do feel like that is um, something going on here. Okay. And I'm also saying with this sun card too, like a special child or a blessed child, especially with the moon card. Um, you know, maybe somebody who wants to have children or is thinking about getting pregnant or, but there's so much to do, right? There's so much preparations to undertake for that. And of course, both people need to be on the same page. Um, but I do feel like there's this energy coming through of like, if that's what you want to do, I will uh, support this. And also I feel for those of you that have lost someone, I do feel like they're telling you to go for it, okay? Like if you want to have a kid or you want to have your own family or this type of thing, it does take a lot of work, okay? Beaver energy, balance, work, preparation, commitment, but at the same time, um, you know, I feel like when they, they're saying to you, when you're ready, go for it. Okay, if that's really what you want. So pile number two, interesting reading. <laughs> that kind of went to a different place that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but nonetheless, a very beautiful reading. 
So thank you so much, pile number two, wishing you the very best and take care. Let's move on to pile number three. Okay. <clears throat> Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the red light special and the pampering you and taking care of you. And today's reading is called Firecracker. Who is excited for you? All right, Pile number three, let's go ahead and find out firecracker energy it's almost the fourth of july anyway right pile number three so for those of you in the united states i know a lot of people aren't really celebrating <laughs> too much these days but anyway firecrackers made me think about that let's go ahead and see for pile number three let's see who is most excited about pile number three who is most excited about pile number three? Who's wanting to give pile number three? Ooh, there's the king of pentacles. I think I'm gonna keep that out here on the table here, pile number three, because I'll tell you what, the king of pentacles can really spoil, knows how to spoil somebody and has the funds to do it as well. So <laughs> we'll keep that king of pentacles right there. We could have Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn energy. Let's see here. Somebody who knows how to spoil is is very has good manners. Knows how to like open doors, pull out chairs. Um, somebody who is traditional in a way. Um, somebody who is like, you know, really on six of cups on the bottom of the deck. Really wants to do some nice romantic things for you. Um, you know, is all about like let me draw you a bath. Um, let me book you a massage. Let me give you a massage. You know, the King of Pentacles, that sensual, earthy energy. Um, like, let me, let me give you, let me book a massage for you. Let me, um, yeah, I mean, stuff like that. Definitely, with the Six of Cups coming up, some of you could be receiving a gift of some type or somebody does want to give you a gift or something really nice, especially for those of you that have birthdays coming up or you had recent birthdays. Hello, pile number three. Let's see what we got here. We've got the hermit. Okay. Somebody who needs their alone time. Somebody who needs their time to chill. Ten of cups. Oh my God. I love it. Oh, and the death card. Hey now. Okay. And um, I feel like what you guys are saying Natalie, damn, I need a break. I need a break so bad I can taste it. I need some time away from these damn kids, from this damn house. I need some time away from this damn job. I mean, I want someone to pamper me. Come through, okay? And I hear you, pile number three. I really do. And um, I mean, what's so funny is I feel like you guys are going to be receiving a gift and I feel like there is someone who wants to spoil you and take care of you. And I honestly feel like some people could be kind of jealous of that with the death card here. Okay. Um, because, and it's so funny because I was talking to someone the other day in IRL in real life and, um, Basically, like she was telling me how she's her and her husband are building this new house and everything, but she's very careful because she's always around envious people. And it seems like not always, but it seems like a lot of people are just envious. And I mean, this woman works really, really hard and she has a really successful business. But anyway, it's just kind of reminding me of this reading here of, you know, daddy sending mommy off to um, be by herself to get some time away from shit. And then, you know, having a really good time or, and I, maybe some of you are torn because it's like, well, yeah, I do want to go and like do some stuff on my own. And I could use like a solo vacation with the hermit here. Um, but I also would like to take some of my like summer vacation time to spend with my family or doing fun things with my family with the 10 of cups here. Okay. 
but I feel some of you could have some, again, I feel some, of, even if you don't, you're like, ah, Natalie, I don't have a husband and a da 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 and all of that. That's fine, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You're okay. We come in all shapes and sizes in this tarot world. But, um, but what I feel like is it's like somebody giving you a really nice gift. And for some of you guys, that could be um, your boss comes in and I mean, I remember years ago, one day my boss walked into my office with an envelope of cash and I was like, mm, why am I getting this? And he was like, you know, you've just been working really hard lately and um, I heard you were having some issues with your car and I just, you've been doing a really good job, so here's some cash. And I mean, I was shocked. I was like, what? But, cause I mean, that isn't normally, and again, this was years ago, I mean, but I was like, well, thank you, you know? And so I, I feel like it's like, whoa, like something like there's a king of pentacles walks into your office and here's an envelope of cash or, you know, that type of situation where you're given a gift or someone that is interested in you, who's older, who's more traditional, somebody who is um, like, you know, has good manners. All right. And is like, hey, hey, baby, you know, do you want to go? off on the, your own solo trip. I won't be offended if you want to. I know everyone needs time away from their life because they get overwhelmed and things like that. Um, everyone, hey baby, like, you know, yes, but go ahead, like take some time to yourself, okay? But then I kind of feel like you guys are torn because you're like, well, yeah, but I, I want to spend some time, you know, with the people I care about too, or I want to spend some time together with this person. I don't just want to go on my own. So, you know, and we only have so many days off or things like that during the year, right? But like, you know, it's kind of like, well, I'm torn, I want to do both. <laughs> Good for you, pile number three. Good for you. Okay, it's like, yeah, I want to go spend time with my friends or the people I care about or whatever. But I also want to go off and do my own thing. And I need some alone time badly. Okay. And, um, the thing is, is yeah, like in this person, I feel like wants to give that to you. They're like, yeah, you, I, I would like to give you that. I'd like to give you this gift or this present. And, um, I feel like this person is very respectful of your need for alone time and your need for chill time on your own, um, to kind of disconnect, but they would also like to take you to do something really fun that like would make you laugh or would be silly or fun or things that everyone could do together or like a fun activity, okay? Or a game or an activity or something like, they, they're trying to come up with ideas, I feel like here, pile number three. And the hard part of it is some of like what this person wants to do, do for you is, you know, pissing other people off, okay? <laughs> And I am getting a specific energy of a sister-in-law or a sister-in-law type figure, somebody like that or who is like that, that is pissed off that, you know, you're having so much fun and you're enjoying yourself and this person is giving you what you want. I am getting something about a very uh, jealous woman or somebody who is agitated because um, they want what you have, pile number three, and... It's like, I don't know. I feel like what you have with someone is very sweet with the Six of Cups. It's very, very sweet. And I don't know why people are always trying. Why, why do people got to be like that? Why do they always got to try to be ruin, ruining other people's good time or giving other people the evil eye? And I'm not a big evil eye person, pile number three. I'm really not. Like, you know, whatever. The evil eye can step, like, step off evil eye, you know? <laughs> like, that type of thing. I don't even really focus on it that much. But I do. And maybe you're like that, too. Maybe you're like, you know what? I don't even, like, I just live my life and have a good time. I don't know why all these people are so mad about me having things that I want in my life. And hey, pile number three, I'm right there with you. And let's see what else we've got going on here. With the Hermit, again, more Earth sign energy, Virgo energy, Scorpionic energy with the Death card. We have Opposition and Balance. And, um, you know, we need time to enjoy, like, we need balance, right? We can't, what happens when we start weighing too far in one direction or we start leaning too far 
in one direction, it destroys the balance in our life, okay? If one thing must come up, the other thing must come down, right? Basic physics and, um, yeah, learning to balance a lot of different things all at one time, I feel like has you guys feeling like, hey, I do need some time alone. Like, it is stressful. We have Gemini energy, lots of plans, lots of communication, um, very, like, you know, restless and fidgety to kind of get out and, and get away from things and have a good time. Okay, but I also feel like maybe some of you could have had your social battery kind of drained too. It's like normally I do like talking to people or normally I do like um, going out and stuff like that. But lately I feel like my social battery has been very like drained. And that can be because of some of the people that you're seeing at certain events that you go to or people that you're running into, just like really negative Nancys. And it's like, yeah, um, you know, like I just get so tired of having conversations with these people all the time because they're always so negative and mean. And they always, they always act like the worst is going to happen all the time. And I get so sick of listening to them. And I get so tired of like, you know, their attitude all the time. And some of you, this could be a work thing where, you know, work has been really irritating and agitating and the way people have been talking to you has just been like, oh my God, like, come on already, you know? <laughs> so I really do feel like, and maybe you can find yourself getting like more snappy with people and you can find yourself getting shorter tempered with people and you've almost like told a bitch off like five or six times so far pile number three in the last month you know because it's that energy of like i need to balance my life and i need more time for myself okay and i feel like this king of pentacles is like let me help with that i'll help you with that and um i'll make it so you don't have to talk to those irritating ass people or i'll help you get away from that and um, maybe somebody was talking to you about needing more balance in your life or, um, you know, because someone's been very like verbally agitating to you. And I feel like somebody could have been very superficial with you, combative, um, you know, just being really restless and fidgety and superficial when you're just trying to be in the present moment and enjoy a good time, the Ten of Cups, and it's like, why do they always have to come? Like, why do they always have to show up? Like, why do they always have to show up? <laughs> I just saw, I was watching this show where they were talking about demon time. Like, I thought that this person was acting right, but they, they showed up on demon time. And I was like, that's hilarious. Like someone being on demon time. <laughs> And then I saw a comment on a video once and somebody was talking about someone else having Hannibal Lecter energy. And I just thought, I mean, I la laughed my face off when I saw that pile number three, like Hannibal Lecter energy. That's, that's the death card, I feel. Like somebody kind of giving you Hannibal Lecter energy um, or somebody purposely trying to rule, like ruin a good time or like, impose all their rules on you and trying to like corner you in social situations and like talk your ear off and you're like dear god like <laughs> anything but this okay I just thought that was hilarious we have moon and feelings oh yeah somebody is in their feelings about you pile number three like it's this person who is always um like they're in there, they have gut reactions all the time and they're not very good about showing their own. And maybe you guys are like this too. You're like, I don't really have a poker face either, Natalie. Like if somebody is being weird to me or acting weird towards me, um, I do get a gut reaction to people and I will get a weird stanky look on my face if someone is saying things that I find very unreasonable or dumb. Like, I feel like you guys may get kind of like, a, you get like a look on your face. You're like, oh, I'm glad these people can't see my face. Cause I mean, I would be giving them the death stare, you know, but the moon card is about our 
gut reaction towards someone. It's like with the death card, it's like immediately I hate this person, immediately I don't like them, okay? And I feel like, you know, you guys are actually just trying to focus on the good things in your life and this King of Pentacles and the nice things that they want to do. And the only thing I'll say about this King of Pentacles is they may be a little bit oblivious to like, I feel like they want to fix things and maybe um, like with money or here's this to do that or here I'll give you this and that'll make everything better. Um, and you'll be happy and everything will be perfect. All right, the Hermit and the Ten of Cups. But I kind of feel like there's maybe some deeper feelings with the Death card and the Moon card. And maybe sometimes you guys feel like, well, but they're not really like getting how exhausting or draining this is for me. Or they're not really like understanding like that this is like emotionally draining me or upsetting me, right? And I, I feel like this person really, like, you know, talk about like simplistic gestures that are very nice and simple, six of cups. Like that's lovely for a simplistic gesture of telling someone, you know, sending them a nice card, telling them you care, okay? But this person is excited for you it makes them happy to see you happy and they want to do things to help put a smile on a, on on your face and make everything nice for you, okay? But I also feel like there could be with the moon card here, there could be someone in their family that is upsetting you, okay? Um, or there could be somebody in your family that's upsetting you because um, the moon does have to do with family, domestic situations, okay? Um, people that are just being like seeing these people as like nails on a chalkboard. You know what I mean? Pile number three. And um, it's the last thing that you want to hear when you've already had like a very challenging, busy time going on. Okay. So I do feel like this person is very excited about fixing things for you and making things better for you. And they're excited to give you a gift. And I feel like this person does like to give gifts, okay? Um, but maybe sometimes they think by giving a gift that it takes away everything bad that's happening. And it's like, nope, there's still like feelings that are, um, you know, like broiling under the surface. Or there's still feelings that are hurt or feelings that are resentful feelings or angry feelings or, um, you know, feelings that are just like not easy to let go of is what I feel. Okay. And, um, we have the ninth house of seeking here. Okay. This person really trying to, um, make the energies balance out more for you. Okay. And some of you are like sick of talking and sick of social socializing and you want time alone, okay? And then, but you also want time, family time, domestic time, um, you know, chill time, okay? And, but then with this ninth house, you could have with the death card, somebody who's always like looking for a fight or somebody who is always like, um, wanting to like gossip or pull you into their shit or um, somebody who's always like rubbing it in your face all the time about how much they get to travel and how much they get to do and how like special they are because of all the things they get to do. And it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a pile number three. Yay, yay, yay. Um, and I also feel this person could be very jealous of whatever freedom that you have to like, but here's the thing. I feel like this person has a lot on their own already that they have, and they do get to travel a lot and they do get to go places and, but still they're not happy, you know, or they are wealthy or they do get to do things, but they're still not happy. And here's you over here, pile number three. I feel like you're fine with 
the simple things or the like, you know, having alone time to yourself, solo trips, um, getting to spend, you know, 10 of cups, just um, being in the present moment with the people you care about and having a nice time, okay? And this person over here could be going on trips all the time and da 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 and having a lot of things, but they're not enjoying their life. You know what I mean? And oftentimes it's not about what we have financially. It's about the emotional, the emo our emotional state and the way we're sh sharing our time with the people around us, right? And um, so I think it's interesting because this reading is really about this King of Pentacles and what they wanna do and how they wanna help you with things. But this person keeps popping into your reading and something about you really excites them pile number three but like in a negative way where like when you show up to the event they're like oh good <laughs> you know like that type of thing and it's like whoa you know like and I feel this is kind of like you know and somebody here could be a real firecracker uh, this person could be a real firecracker this death card person who's always looking for shit that they're never going to find because they're not happy within themselves, okay? And um, the thing is, is I feel you guys can be happy on your own. You can be happy enjoying the present moment and simple moments of pleasure with the people that you like around you, food, movies, music, whatever, game, game night, like you're fine with it, okay? Uh, you're just sick of always hearing this person's complaints all the time or... Um, you know, them trying to one up you all the time or make you feel jealous of their life or like, you're just tired. It's like, I'm tired of hearing about all this stuff. Like, why are you even talking to me? Gemini energy. Okay. And so <laughs> anyway, I don't know. This is an interesting, I wasn't expecting this also to pop up in your reading pile number three, but this King of Pentacles is saying, I think about you as I fall asleep and as soon as I wake up. So, I mean, they like, they're like, I think about you and I try to consider your feelings all the time, moon and feelings, and what would make you happy, the moon and the ten of cups. This king of pentacles is like, I try to provide some balance in your life because I know things get hectic and hard, and um, I try to do things and think about things that would make you happy, and um, they have to distract, and I feel you guys are pretty busy with this Gemini energy, and maybe you have needed to have some alone time because you have been very busy with things going back and forth, back and forth, okay? Uh, work, stuff like that, um, you know, family, work, going back and forth, all this type of stuff. But, um, you know, this person is also saying like, they think about you during the day all the time and they have to distract themselves to keep the, their mind from wandering back to you, wondering what you're doing, wondering how you are, um, you know, they try to stay busy as well too, like with work and projects and things like that. And they're busy as well. The King of Pentacles is busy too, but it's like, you're the first thing they think about when they wake up and they're like, ah, I wonder if you're alone. I wonder if you're happy. I wonder, um, like, I want to talk to you, Gemini energy. Like, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Like this person? Yeah. I feel like this King of Pentacles is really, um, here to bring some balance into your life, not just for you, but also for them too, okay? But I also have to say this, I have to distract myself throughout the day to keep my mind from wandering back to you. I also feel like it's this hater as well, pile number three, that's like thinking about you all the time in their feelings about it, um, you know, and distracted all the time by you just simply living your life. And they're trying to seek out ways to find you or hurt hurt you or not like I'm not getting like physically hurt you but like take you down a notch like that type of energy you know and um it's like why <laughs> this person has you this death card person has you running through their mind all day and it's like give it a rest already okay and I feel like you guys are like Natalie I'm just exhausted hearing about it and I'm like yeah I hear you and um do you still love me I feel like I'm losing you okay and this king of pentacles I feel like is like that because maybe sometimes you're distant with this hermit 
it seems like you're distant, but it could be because you're overwhelmed. Um, you're like mentally drained. You've got a lot on your mind, moon and Gemini, Gemini energy. Um, you know, and I feel like this King of Pentacles really just wants to make you happy or show you that they care. And, um, they're like, Hey, do you still like me? I feel like you might not like me or you've been really busy lately or this type of thing. Um, but I feel like, I feel like they're secure though. You know, this King of Pentacles, I do feel like they're secure. I feel like they're just kind of wanting to talk about it. Okay. Talk about their feelings and see what's going on. The thing is, is I feel like you guys are kind of exhausted from talking about your feelings. So that can be kind of a lot you know, um, but let's see what else we have here. It says open, this King of Pentacles is saying, open up your heart to me. Please say what's on your mind, Moon and Gemini. Okay, please say what's on your mind. I know we've been through so much pain, but I still need you in my life, okay? I know you and I both have been through a lot and there's been times when we've been self-sabotaging and seeking things that can't fulfill us and um, death card ninth house okay but at the same time talk to me I want to know what you're feeling I want to know where you're at like are you distant from me do you not want me around or will you open up your life to me will you open up your heart to me okay and um, we have here, bring me to the brink of ecstasy. Ooh. And, you know, this could be about seeking out deep, sexually transformative experiences as well. And, um, you know, like really wanting to go to a new level when it comes to intimacy. Okay. And, like, bring me to the brink of, like bring me to the brink of it and catch me when I fall like that type of energy. Okay. But it's very sexy energy. Bring me to the brink of ecstasy. Okay. And, um, I feel like that's what you guys also want and need like less talking, less, whatever, more just like, um, hunger in the moment, you know, more like, something magnetic pulling you towards something and it's like a magnetic hunger that you feel in that moment all right so yeah no pressure right pile number three no pressure but we have the king of pentacles here we've got badger and endurance now this person doesn't want to bother you i feel like with the hermit energy here they don't want to bother you but they also are not going to give up um on like bringing you to the brink of ecstasy okay they're not going to give up on wanting to make you feel good showing you they care talking to you trying to get you to talk about your feelings okay and they really don't want to bother you but at the same time like i said they're not letting go either it says whatever you seek your tenacity and faith will be paying off know that no matter the temporary outer conditions you will manifest your desires in divine timing and in the form that is best for you. And you know, with death in the ninth house, it can feel like the things that were our dreams or the things that we want are like coming to an end. Um, but in truth, they may just be changing. Okay. And this person's like, I don't want to really annoy you or bother you, but I also want to show you that I'm sticking around King of Pentacles. Like I am here to stick around. Okay, but I also feel like with the badger showing up, like there's been a lot of people badgering you, like a lot of people that want your time or are seeking some type of reaction from you about um, whatever, you know, and I feel like that's why you guys with the hermit, you're like, just leave me alone. Stop badgering me, you know, <laughs> but this person's like, I'm not going anywhere. The king of pentacles is like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, talk to me. Tell me what you're feeling. And you guys are like, shh, no more words. Just, you know, look at me, embrace me, that type of thing. <laughs> we have curiosity. Wow. With the Gemini energy here too. And um, 
you know, this person like very curious about you, wanting to know what's on your mind, what's on your heart, uh, what are you feeling, what are you thinking, like very endlessly curious about you and um, seeking to understand you more is what I feel. Okay, but I also feel with this death card over here, like somebody trying to badger you to get information from you and so that they can use that to their advantage at a future date. So I would definitely watch out for somebody who's asking you way too many questions and is trying to get a reaction from those questions that they're asking you. Pile number three, I would not, you know, I would not really say your plans or your business or talk about your goals or your visions or what you're trying to do because I do feel like somebody could uh, use that information to their advantage, okay? And somebody could be trying to badger you or constantly ask you and it's like, leave me alone, okay? And um, anyway, so I am getting, I feel like you guys are like, I don't want anyone to be curious about me, Natalie. Like, just let me be, you know? <laughs> and I, ooh, the Scorpio energy, all right? The Scorpionic energy. And I was talking about Gemini Scorpio earlier anyway, but now we have the Scorpion showing up in your reading. And, um, you know, being very curious about somebody's secrets, curiosity in Scorpio, uh, wanting to know someone else's secrets, okay? And I also feel like this King of Pentacles is like very curious about you sexually and like what you're into and curious about like your sexual secrets, okay? But I also feel like someone could be kind of... <laughs> This energy over here of the death card, this person trying to get you to share intimate details about your sex life with them and then kind of turning it around and using it against you. So, and kind of badgering you about details of your sex life or details of what's going on. I would keep that information to yourself, pile number three, all day and all night. I would not share that with this death card energy over here at all. Okay, I do feel like this King of Pentacles isn't really going anywhere and they want to stay around and endure with you through all of this and they are curious to know you on a deeper sexual level and understand what makes you passionate, what makes you tick, what arouses you, what um, like, you know, what feels good, all that kind of stuff. Like they want to know more, all right? And they're curious about the hidden secret side of you, okay? And, you know, some of you here with this hermit energy, you may have a hidden secret side of you as well that you don't really share with any everyone and anyone. You know, small talk, Gemini energy, like small talk, but there is like a, you're, you might be good at small talk, but there's like that deeper part of you that's kind of hidden. I feel like pile number three in this, King of Pentacles really wants to bring that out of you. Um, but I also feel like because you've dealt with people in your life who want to bring that, bring information out of you in a negative way and are seeking information about your intimate life on a deeper level, I feel like you do not want to give that information at all. And probably in the past, that information's been used against you, pile number three. So I feel like you really don't want to give that information and I agree with you from that perspective. But I think you can trust this King of Pentacles, okay? Um, this death card person over here, not so much, okay? Not at all, really. But this King of Pentacles, yeah, all right? So pile number three, that is what I am getting for you, my loves. I hope that that reading resonated for you. And I wish you the very best. Take care.